And good evening. It has happened again. More than 100 suspected undocumented immigrants arrested in Northeast Ohio. ICE rated four fresh mark locations this afternoon. We have team coverage for you tonight. Chris Ty is in Salem where all of the workers were arrested. But first, my co-anchor Sarah Shookman in Maslin where fresh mark is headquartered. Sarah, good evening. Good evening to you, Russ. This company has a nearly 100 year old history here in Maslin and tonight Freshmark is at the center of what's reported to be the largest workforce raid under the Trump administration to date. While tensions surrounding immigration swell in Washington and beyond, tonight families here in Maslin and Canton and in Salem are separated too after search warrants were served here this afternoon. Now, most of us know Freshmark better by its product names like Sugardale hot dogs and bacon. Its bacon is, is literally in the air here. We can smell it where workers process and package it behind us. Now, immigration officials say some of those workers are undocumented and Freshmark might have hired them knowingly. The company operates four plants here, one in Canton, Salem, and another also in Maslin. Here's video from that location on Southway Street where we saw agents loading a U-Haul with documents. I says some of those workers were detained from the plant in Salem. That's where Channel 3's Chris Ty is right now. Chris, have we learned how did all this get started? Yeah, it's worth taking a look back here, Sarah, as the immigration debate in this country has raged for the better part of the last week in a white hot way. It's been the better part of the last year that immigrations and customs enforcement have been preparing for today's raid here in Salem. And we can tell you that the folks who were taken here this afternoon are spending this evening in Brooklyn Heights, just south of Cleveland for processing. They were mid shift wearing these white coats at the meat factory when the choppers and agents descended, executing the largest raid on undocumented workers in this country in over a decade. They're afraid. They're terrified. They're, uh, they don't know what happens next. Tonight, many of the children of these 100 workers, mostly native of Guatemala, staying in the basement of this Where's Salem Sarah church Kenner, as their parents are shipped to an immigration facility in suburban Cleveland, where their backgrounds are being checked and their futures are being determined. Because we are a country, it's really poor, no money. No food, no clothes. It's really sad. It's it's like sad something's been pulled out of your heart. Sister Reen Weeks runs the Hispanic ministry at St. Paul Catholic Church in Salem. She says this company cannot hire enough people as the signs outside echo. They can't get enough employees, even with all the immigrants they're hiring. So I think that says something about the myth that they're all taking away all of the jobs that people want. What's not a myth, Rosalita Wanwan tells me tonight, children in Northeast Ohio are now part of that national conversation, going to bed away from their parents. And the kids, they waiting for parents. They waiting and they come in and the parents is not coming to the house. As ICE tries to send these workers back to their home country, this country continues to grapple with the way to implement a law that is being broken in a more humane way. It's not terrorists. They try to get better life. This make me feel sad. And just before we came on the air here at 11 o'clock tonight, the company issuing a statement saying that they have a very close and robust relationship with Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, saying that they have been working with them intimately over the years. So the question tonight, Sarah, is did these workers just have foolproof documentation or might the company have turned a blind eye to it all, a centerpiece of the investigation, which is just moving in a new direction tonight. For now, live in Salem, Chris Ty, Channel 3 News, back to you in Maslin. Absolutely right. Thank you, Chris. Now, as we said, Freshmark is best known by its brand names like Superior's brand Meats and Sugardale. Its meats are so ubiquitous, its marketing director has said if you have eaten in a restaurant, you have eaten a Freshmark product. You've likely eaten its hot dogs at Progressive Field, where Sugardale sponsors Dollar Dog Night. Or maybe it's pepperoni on a pizza or it's bacon on a burger at Wendy's. In fact, we just introduced you to Sugardale's bacon last month when the mascot joined the Indians hot dog derby. The meats produced in these Northeast Ohio facilities are found at grocery stores, restaurants, and food service companies around the world.
After nearly 100 years, the company is family-owned. It was founded in Maslin, where it's still headquartered, in 1920. We reached out to several of our representatives tonight. Senator Sherrod Brown told us his, quote, first concern is for the children who were separated from their families by the raid, and his office is looking into what they can do to help them. We also reached out to his opponent in November's Senate race, Congressman Jim Renacci. We did not hear back from him tonight, but earlier today, Congressman Renacci did comment on what's going on nationwide, saying Congress must take action to enforce America's immigration laws while also preventing the separation of children from their parents on our border. Tonight, we also reached out to Veronica Dahlberg, the founder and executive director of OLA Ohio, one of the advocacy groups for Latino families. She told us, quote, the people who worked at Freshmark are part of a very gentle, hardworking community, and this is outrage. Nobody should believe this is about enforcing the law. This is about the Trump administration trying to decimate the Latino community, end quote. Well, this raid comes on the heels of a very similar one here in Northeast Ohio. Two weeks ago, ICE agents raided the Corsco's Garden Center in Sandusky. Now, Ola, that group we just told you about, told us at last check, 106 undocumented immigrants were detained. 13 of them have been released. Now, since deportation planes typically leave on Tuesdays, the group tells us as many as 10 more people could be deported before the day is done, perhaps already have, and that eventually more than 30 people from Corsos are expected to be deported. 